And now, your weather authority forecast first. Brought to you by Todd Shores, McClarty Ford. Well, good morning, Wednesday morning, and it is starting out cold. We have temperatures that have dropped below freezing in the northern Arklatex. Still some locations in the 40s here south of I-20, so there are a few of us that are dealing with the freeze to start out the morning, which is very uncharacteristic for this late in the spring. High pressure building in, so it will be cold through the morning, but with lots of sunshine on the way this afternoon. Well below normal highs, but I do think it will feel pretty nice out there with highs in the mid-60s. Not as much wind today as well. We'll start the warming trend tomorrow. We don't have any freezing temperatures in store tonight, but we do have some thunderstorms returning on Friday. A few of those storms can be on the strong side, and I'll have a breakdown of that coming up in a few minutes. That's a look at your Totten Shores. McClarty Ford forecast first. NBC6 News Today begins right now. Now, from your community, local news that matters. This is NBC6 News Today. Guilty on all counts. We'll take a look as the Derek Chauvin verdict causes a growing push for police reform in Washington. And a local restaurant addresses online rumors of racial discrimination during the Bayou Classic. Good morning and thanks for giving a local with NBC6 News today. I'm Brad Cesac. And I'm Fernanda Hernandez. A well known downtown Shreveport restaurant is dealing with backlash on social media. That's our top story this morning. Management of the Blind Tiger restaurant say they closed this past weekend with the Bayou Classic in town for construction. But some don't believe that's the case, saying the closure was actually due to racial discrimination. NBC6's Darren Todd explains both sides. We understand how it looks now. But it was not motivated in any way by any kind of racism. The popular downtown eatery Blind Tiger stirred up a lot of controversial conversation in the past 72 hours and not in a good way. Optics are everything, man. And it looked as though that um, this particular business did not want to do business with uh, the patrons of the Bayou Classic who are uh, typically predominantly black. Blind Tigers management says that they were closed to fix damage to the building after a car ran into the building back in March. Uh, it's just kind of how it started out. And then when we chose the weekend, we didn't realize that that was what was going on that weekend. Taylor Jamison is with the Shreveport Bossier African American Chamber of Commerce. He says it was a historical moment for the city and for any local restaurant to capitalize from. But questions as to why the restaurant closed at that time. We're used to seeing that down in New Orleans because that game has been played down there for so many years. But seeing that in your own community, it, it hurts a little bit different. The restaurant industry, especially after um, all of the COVID restrictions that we've had, and, and uh, ironically, you're missing out on a on the busiest weekend uh, to date for this year. And we said, you know what? Let's let these guys. We'll get it fixed. Let our guys have a weekend off, and do it again. There's no. There was no. Intent. I mean, it's poor judgment, I would say. At, now it is. But at the time, it seemed like we were doing something, you know, to help everybody out. Jameson says that he's been to the restaurant many times before, but now he's just processing it all. You know, it's hard to say just don't support them without them um, trying to explain themselves. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Now, management says they haven't seen a decline in sales or business since the incident. But they do want to apologize for the wrongful message and serve the people they love. In the national headlines this morning, a jury finds former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all counts related to causing the death of George Floyd. Chauvin found guilty on of second degree unintentional murder, which carries the possibility of 40 years in prison. He's also guilty of third degree murder. That carries up to 25 years in prison at sentencing and second degree manslaughter, which carries a possibility of 10 years. The judge in his case said sentencing is expected in eight weeks. Chauvin's bail has been revoked and he'll remain in custody until he's sentenced. And that guilty verdict is heightening calls in Washington for police reform. Tracy Potts has more. From the White House, relief and a call to do more. A measure of justice isn't the same as equal justice. It is not just a black America problem or a people of color problem. It is a problem for every American. Nothing is going to make it all better, but at least God, now there's some justice. In the right. After speaking with Floyd's family, President Biden urged Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. This takes acknowledging and confronting head-on systemic racism 
and the racial disparities that exist in policing and in our criminal justice system. I can't breathe. Those are George Floyd's last words. We can't let those words die with him. Relief too on Capitol Hill. Thank God the jury validated what we saw. So today I am relieved. Today I exhale. The bill is passed. Democrats who sponsored the bill banning chokeholds, no knock warrants, and ending immunity for police say it's just a first step. We are hopeful that today will be the catalyst to turn the pain, the agony, the justice delayed into actions that go far beyond today. Agony and anger. Verdicts are not a replacement for policy change. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez live on Instagram urging Congress to make police reform a priority. On Twitter, Speaker Pelosi is being called tone deaf by some for referring to George Floyd's murder as sacrificing his life for justice. She tweeted to clarify, adding that Floyd should be alive today and that he did not die in vain. Tracy Potts, NBC News. Thank you, Tracy. And meanwhile, Texas legislators honor Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen nearly a year after she went missing from Fort Hood. Lawmakers introduced several bills to protect service members from sexual harassment and assault. The Vanessa Guillen Act is designed to help military members report abuse without fear of retaliation. Guillen reportedly told her family she was being sexually harassed by a fellow soldier before she went missing. Her remains were found in June. Monday, lawmakers said enough is enough, calling for reform surrounding sexual assault and harassment in the military. This ordeal opened our eyes to shocking gaps in the Army's procedure or lack thereof when it comes to sexual harassment and assault. It revealed a deeply rooted, systemic, toxic culture of sexual harassment. We can do better. We must do better. And other legislation would also name a highway in Guillen's honor and designate September 30th as Vanessa Guillen Day in Texas. NBC6 is your local election headquarters. And the 2020 election brought unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud and concerns about voting machines. But a bill filed by Louisiana State Senator Sharon Hewitt would create a commission to oversee the selection of the machines. The commission would be made up of politicians, election and cybersecurity experts, as well as members appointed by the governor, and they would hear public input during committee meetings. This bill does establish the framework to move us forward on voting systems, and I've worked very closely with the Secretary of State over the last few weeks on this bill and working to make it better. Now, some people who testified against the bill talked about wanting to switch to paper ballots, suggesting they were safer from any cyber attacks. The bill now heads to the House floor. And City Council in Bossier discusses an expansion of a noise ordinance to include motorcycles. The idea is introduced by Councilman Jeffrey Darby. He says an existing city ordinance already covers loud music coming from homes and cars. Darby's proposal would add motorcycles, stopping them from blasting music along roadways and next to cars. He says it's about promoting a peaceful noise le level and public safety. We think about noise all the time, and when you're traveling, you can be easily distracted. And when a motorcycle is next to your vehicle blasting their music, and we have, of course, road rage all the time, people can get easily get upset. Now, if passed, the ordinance would have offenders facing a fine of $200 and potentially losing their driver's license for up to 30 days. Well, coming up sunny today, but thunderstorms return soon. Josh Marshes has a full check of your forecast coming up right after the break. You're watching NBC6 News Today with Brad Zizek, Fernanda Hernandez, and Josh Marshes, your weather authority, certified the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex.
And now, your weather authority, Josh Marsis, certified the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex. Well, welcome back. It is 614 right now and taking a live look at our camera into Queen, Arkansas, where you may encounter a little bit of frost this morning as our temperatures have dropped below freezing here. And we are long past the date when we should see the temperatures drop below freezing. So unseasonably cold this morning. We're now down to 30 in Queen as well as Idabel. So if you're anywhere here north of Interstate 30, good chance you are seeing some freezing temperatures all the way down to maybe Clarksville and uh, possibly the Decab area as well. We're at 43 in Natchitoches, 41 in Shreveport. If you're in Texarkana, Mount Pleasant and Magnolia, you're right around 34, 35 degrees. And we do have a freeze warning for those locations through about 9 o'clock this morning. So if you are worried about some of the house plants you may have outside or just some plants out in the yard that you may want to cover up. You've got a few more hours to do that, but I do think the uh, coldest of the air will likely be between now and about 7:30 this morning. Once we get the sun up, we'll start to warm the temperatures a bit. Uh, one change today turned very breezy yesterday as our cold front moved through. The winds have been coming down overnight and should continue to do so today. So only one location in Sabine Parish, Manny, reporting a 10 mile per hour wind. Everybody else, the winds have uh, kind of settled down here. But even with the light breeze, with the cold temperatures, it still feels pretty. Cold cold out there to start out your Wednesday morning. Cold front moving east. We didn't have any rain with the front yesterday. High pressure building in today, so we'll enjoy uh, basically all day sunshine. Just a few upper level clouds drifting through, and it's really rare you get a sunny day this time of the year where your highs come in about 10 to 15 degrees below normal, and that's what we'll see today. Shreveport at 66 degrees, 65 in Natchitoches, as well as Texarkana, and 63 in Idabel. We're to that point of the year where we see normal temperatures in the upper 70s, almost 80 degrees is what we would typically see for highs this time of the year. We'll be dry today as well as tomorrow. We're watching Friday. We've got a storm system out here along the west coast. You can see that dip in the jet stream and some of the rain that's popped up in California as well as Nevada. Once that dip in the jet stream gets to the Arkletex on Friday. It will bring with it some of the ingredients for some severe thunderstorms. So the Storm Prediction Center, this is the outlook for Friday. They have a slight risk outlook again on that one to five scale. That's the level two threat. And I do think there's some wiggle room here where we can see maybe a level three at some point here. We're looking at those storms arriving Friday afternoon and maybe continuing through early Saturday morning. Initially, we may see a warm front move across the region, and I'll show you that now. Here's a look at your Robin's Hood of Futurecast. Going to cool and sunny today. Don't have any rain in the forecast today or tomorrow, but you'll likely see an uptick in the cloud cover by tomorrow afternoon. That's ahead of that approaching storm system. We get into Friday. There may be a round of storms here uh, late morning, early afternoon, and Futurecast is showing that as a warm front moves across the region. So it looks like that will be our main window for severe weather, likely late in the day here on Friday. And then that final cold front pushing through here Friday night will eventually shut the severe weather threat off by the time we get to sunrise on Saturday. And actually, Saturday now looking to be a pretty decent day if we can get the rain out of here by sunrise. Should have warm temperatures and dry weather Saturday afternoon. And we do have dry weather in the forecast on Sunday. Still looks like we'll see a pretty good soaking. The forecast models have come down as far as the expected rainfall totals. We expected that, uh, but we're still seeing some indications here. We can see widespread totals of about one to two inches of rain. So there will be some periods of heavy rain in there late Friday as well. So if you have any plans to be outside Friday evening, still looking at the potential for maybe some roadway flooding here. But again, no severe weather expected uh, once we get past sunrise on Saturday. Should turn into a pretty nice day. Same thing for Sunday. We're back in the 80s on Sunday as well as Monday. And we're watching next week now, next Tuesday, Wednesday. It looks like there will be a similar setup for severe weather. So not only Friday, but we're watching the next Tuesday, Wednesday time frame for the potential for an additional round of severe storms next week. That's a look at your weather forecast. Let's send it back over to Brad. Having some technical issues with our microphones. So make sure that you're weather ready. Here's an easy way to download the Your Weather Authority app. All you have to do is take out your phone and open the camera app. Just go to your settings and make sure you have the QR scanner enabled. Then just hold up your camera to the screen and a link should pop up. Tap on that link to download our weather app right onto your iPhone or Android device. Your Waze Traffic Report brought to you by Gordon McKernan, Injury Attorneys. 
We'll take a look at the roadways this morning with our NBC6 Ways traffic alert to take a look here at some construction along East Texas Street there in Bossier City. So if you are traveling through that direction this morning, kind of right around where Swan Lake Road there meets East Texas Street, just be aware of that construction area. You might experience a little bit of a delay. We're not seeing any traffic building up around that area right now, though. Now you can stay up to date on the latest traffic alerts with Ways and throughout the newscast right here on NBC6. Well, after the break, see how chronic pain is costing America billions of dollars. Plus, Dr. Daryl Marks warns us not to delay hernia treatments. That's in this week's Medical Minutes. Watching NBC6 News today. Welcome back. Your health matters, and the number of new infections of COVID 19 in children continues to increase. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics and the Children's Hospital Association, more than 88,000 new pediatric cases were reported last week. Now, experts say children represented 20% of the new weekly cases. As of April 15th, more than 3.6 million children have tested positive since the pandemic began. And our new study suggests one in five adults is living with chronic pain. Researchers analyzed data from the National Health Interview Survey. They estimate 50 million adults experience chronic pain. Now, the scientists also estimated the total value of lost productivity due to chronic pain is nearly $300 billion a year. Back, hip, knee, and foot pain were the most common sources of pain reported. Meanwhile, a hernia is an all too common condition which impacts many Americans. Here's Dr. Daryl Marks with more in today's Medical Minute. This NBC6 Medical Minute is brought to you by Dr. Daryl Marks. Hernias are problems within the abdomen that can cause a great deal of problems. They usually demonstrate themselves as a bulge or an enlargement of a particular area, particularly in the groin, around the navel, or in incisions. They do not need to be watched for a significant amount of time. There's a common misconception that if it's not bothering, you don't fix it. These need to be repaired, and they can be done robotically or open in a variety of different techniques. We'd be happy to get these fixed in patients on a regular basis. I'm Dr. Daryl Ox Marks for your Medical Minute. Well, Josh is back with a quick check of the forecast after the break. Stay tuned.
watching NBC6 News today. Well, welcome back. It is 625 right now, turning into a very cold morning, but we don't have any cloud cover out there. So eventually we'll get the sun to shine through here and start to warm things up a bit. But uh, definitely feeling a little more like winter. That's the look at things in Marshall. Not in a freeze warning there, but uh, Cass County and areas to the north. You do have a freeze warning in effect through 9 a.m. this morning. We are watching those temperatures, which have dropped below freezing north of I-30. We're at 30 in Idabel as well as Dequeen. Texarkana, you're above freezing at the moment at 35. But just a very cold morning for you and still a few locations in the 40s, including 42 in Natchitoches and currently at 41 degrees in Shreveport. For the morning commute today, obviously no rain out there with the clear skies and it doesn't look like we have uh, much fog setting up. So I think it will be a decent morning commute from a weather standpoint. High pressure builds in today. We may see just a few upper level clouds drift through here south of Interstate 20, but it will be a mostly sunny day. Eventually the temperatures will start to warm up a bit, but make sure uh, the kids have a jacket with them today. May need the uh, thicker winter jacket with temperatures forecast to be in the 30s, maybe through about 9 a.m. in quite a few areas. And then later today in the sunshine, mid 60s should feel quite nice for all of us, and we'll be back into the 70s tomorrow. We've got some rain headed our way on Friday. I'll have a breakdown of that coming up in the next half hour. We'll send it back over to Brad and Fernanda. Thank you, Josh. Well, Community Matters and Give for a Good Day is now a two-week-long event. And last year, the Community Foundation of North Louisiana raised nearly $2 million online. In the next two weeks, they hope to get to that $2 million mark. And they say this fundraiser is vital to so many local nonprofits. Being the eighth year that we're participating, we have really enjoyed to watch the community support us every year, greater than the year before, and we're very hopeful that the community will do it again this year and increase the giving from last year. And you can donate to your favorite organizations through May 4th. All you have to do is go to the website, pick a nonprofit, and add them to your cart. Well, here is a live look from our Arkansas DOT traffic cam. This is I-30 at mile marker 8. Stick around. NBC6 News Today continues after the break.
And now, your weather authority forecast first. Brought to you by Todd Shores, McClarty Ford. Well, good morning. It is a very cold morning. We have quite a few locations that have dropped below freezing across the northern Arkansas, and we're down to 33 now in Mount Pleasant. Very well can drop below freezing there in the next hour or so. So have a jacket this morning. Uh, today it will be cooler than average as we have high pressure building in. We'll have a lot of sun out there, and eventually highs will warm into the mid-60s this afternoon. So it will feel pleasant in the sun, but definitely one of those days where it will be cool in the shade and not as much wind this afternoon as well. We'll be a little bit warmer tomorrow and the chance of thunderstorms will increase as we move through the day Friday. I'll have a breakdown of that coming up shortly. That's a look at your Todd Shores, McClarty Ford forecast first. NBC6 News Today begins right now. Now, from your community, local news that matters. This is NBC6 News Today. Guilty on all counts. We'll take a look at as the Derek Chauvin verdict causes a growing push for police reform in Washington. And a local restaurant addresses online rumors of racial discrimination during the Bayou Classic. Good morning and thanks keeping it local with NBC6 News Today. I'm Brad Cisak. And I'm Fernanda Hernandez. A well-known downtown Treeport restaurant is dealing with backlash on social media. That's our top story this morning. Management of the Blind Tiger Restaurant says they closed this past weekend with the Bayou Classic in town for construction. But some don't believe that's the case, saying the closure was actually due to racial discrimination. NBC6's Darren Todd explains both sides. We understand how it looks now, but it was not motivated in any way by any kind of racism. The popular downtown eatery Blind Tiger stirred up a lot of controversial conversation in the past 72 hours and not in a good way. Optics are everything, man, and it looked as though that um, this particular business did not want to do business with uh, the patrons of the Bayou Classic, who are uh, typically predominantly black. Blind Tigers management says that they were closed to fix damage to the building after a car ran into the building back in March. It's just kind of how it started out, and then when we chose the weekend, we didn't realize that that was what was going on that weekend. Taylor Jamison is with the Shreveport Bossier African American Chamber of Commerce. He says it was a historical moment for the city and for any local restaurant to capitalize from, but questions as to why the restaurant closed at that time. We're used to seeing that down in New Orleans because that game has been played down there for so many years, but seeing that in your own community, it, it hurts a little bit different. The restaurant industry, especially after um, all of the COVID restrictions that we've had, and, and uh, ironically, you're missing out on a on the busiest weekend uh, to date for this year. And we said, you know what? Let's let these guys. We'll get it fixed. Let our guys have a weekend off, and do it again. There's no. There was no intent. I mean, it's poor judgment. I would say at, now it is, but at the time, it seemed like we were doing something, you know, to help everybody out. Jameson says that he's been to the restaurant many times before. But now he's just processing it all. You know, it's hard to say just don't support them without them um, trying to explain themselves. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Now, management says they haven't seen a decline in sales or business since the incident, but they do want to apologize for the wrongful message and serve the people they love. In the national headlines this morning, a jury finds former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all counts related to causing the death of George Floyd. Chauvin found guilty of second-degree unintentional murder, which carries the possibility of 40 years in prison. He's also guilty of third-degree murder. That carries up to 25 years in prison at sentencing and second-degree manslaughter, which carries the possibility of 10 years. The judge in his case said sentencing is expected in eight weeks. Chauvin's bail is revoked and he'll remain in custody until he's sentenced. And that guilty verdict is heightening calls in Washington for police reform. Tracy Potts has more. From the White House, relief and a call to do more. A measure of justice isn't the same as equal justice. It is not just a black America problem or a people of color problem. It is a problem for every American. Nothing is going to make it all better, but at least God, now there's some justice. In the After speaking with Floyd's family, President Biden urged Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. This takes acknowledging and confronting head-on systemic racism 
and the racial disparities that exist in policing and in our criminal justice system. I can't breathe. Those are George Floyd's last words. We can't let those words die with him. Relief too on Capitol Hill. Thank God the jury validated what we saw. So today I am relieved. Today I exhale. The bill is passed. Democrats who sponsored the bill banning chokeholds, no knock warrants, and ending immunity for police say it's just a first step. We are hopeful that today will be the catalyst to turn the pain, the agony, the justice delayed into actions that go far beyond today. Agony and anger. Verdicts are not a replacement for policy change. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez live on Instagram urging Congress to make police reform a priority. On Twitter, Speaker Pelosi is being called tone deaf by some for referring to George Floyd's murder as sacrificing his life for justice. She tweeted to clarify, adding that Floyd should be alive today and that he did not die in vain. Tracy Potts, NBC News. Thank you, Tracy. And Texas legislators honor Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen nearly a year after she went missing from Fort Hood. Lawmakers introduced several bills to protect service members from sexual harassment and assault. The Vanessa Guillen Act is designed to help military members report abuse without fear of retaliation. Guillen reportedly told her family she was being sexually harassed by a fellow soldier before she went missing. Her remains were found in June. Monday, lawmakers said enough is enough, calling for reform surrounding sexual assault and harassment in the military. This ordeal opened our eyes to shocking gaps in the Army's procedure or lack thereof when it comes to sexual harassment and assault. It revealed a deeply rooted, systemic, toxic culture of sexual harassment. We can do better. We must do better. Other legislation would also name a highway in Guillen's honor and designate September 30th as Vanessa Guillen Day in Texas. Well, NBC6 is your local election headquarters, and the 2020 election brought unsubstantiated claims of voter fraud and concerns about voting machines. But a bill filed by Louisiana State Senator Sharon Hewitt would create a commission to oversee the selection of those machines. The commission would be made up of politicians, election and cybersecurity experts, as well as members appointed by the governor, and they would hear public input during committee meetings. This bill does establish the framework to move us forward on voting systems, and I've worked very closely with the Secretary of State over the last few weeks on this bill and working to make it better. Now, some people who testified against the bill talked about wanting to switch to paper ballots, suggesting they were safer from any cyber attacks. The bill now heads to the House floor. The City Council in Bossier discusses an expansion of a noise ordinance to include motorcycles. The idea is introduced by Councilman Jeffrey Darby. He says an existing city ordinance already covers loud music coming from homes and cars. Darby's proposal would add motorcycles, stopping them from blasting music along roadways and next to cars. He says it's about promoting a peaceful noise level in public safety. We think about noise all the time, and when you're traveling, you can be easily distracted. And when a motorcycle is next to your vehicle blasting their music, and we have, of course, road rage all the time, people can get easily get upset. And if PASA ordinance would have offenders facing a fine of $200 and potentially losing their driver li driver's license for up to 30 days. Well, coming up, it's going to be sunny today, but thunderstorms return soon. Meteorologist Josh Marsis has more in the full forecast. And the Shreveport Mudbugs return home after a weekend they're ready to forget. We have those details right after the break. You're watching NBC6 News Today with Brad Cisak, Fernanda Hernandez, and Josh Marsis, your weather authority, certified the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex.
And now, your weather authority, Josh Marsis, certified the most accurate forecast in the Arklatex. Well, welcome back. It is 643. We have just reached sunrise here across much of the Arklatex. So just giving you a look at some of the weather cameras that we have set up across the region. Clear skies, a lot of dry out there, but a lot of cold air as well. We are below freezing in Queen at the moment, so you may encounter a little bit of frost out there this morning. Shreveport right around 40 degrees or so, and we are in the 30s in both Texarkana as well as Marshall. So the areas that are below freezing, uh, all north of I-30, we're down to 30 in Queen and 30 in Idabel, and actually now down to freezing in Magnolia at 32 degrees. Typically sunrise, it's right around the coldest part of the day. It's possible next hour we can see these numbers drop off another degree or two. The uh, record low in Shreveport is 40. We're at 41 degrees, so uh, we may tie or even break that record in the next hour, so we'll be on the lookout for that. But take a jacket this morning. We're still in the 40s in Nac uh, still very cold there and 45 currently in Manny. Winds have come down overnight, turned into a breezy afternoon and evening yesterday, but the wind speeds have been kind of settling during the overnight hours. In most locations today, we'll have a north wind below 10 miles per hour. You get the north wind, you get some cool as well as dry air. So low humidity, a lot of sun today, and eventually the temperature is into the mid-60s, which is about 10 to 15 degrees below average. But if you're out there in the sun, it will actually feel pretty nice, especially with lighter winds this afternoon, but uh, not quite as warm as what we've experienced here for the past few days. So just kind of keep something with sleeves nearby today in case uh, those temperatures may be a little on the cool side for you. High pressure building in today. That's pushing our cold front off to the east. That means we'll see a lot of sun as well. So today a dry day, tomorrow a dry day as well. But we're watching Friday. We've got this storm system uh, back in the western United States, which is moving down the California coastline. That's eventually going to turn across the country here. And as it moves into the Arkletex on Friday, it will bring some of the necessary ingredients to potentially see some severe weather. So right now, the Storm Prediction Center has this in the uh, level two or the slight risk outlook, meaning scattered severe weather here across much of the region. And uh, we will see the potential initially for maybe large hail and a few tornadoes and may uh, turn into what will be a damaging wind threat Friday night. We've got a number of triggers for the storms. Usually this time of the year we get a cold front moves through. We deal with the one round of storms and that's it. But uh, looks like we'll see a warm front move through, then a cold front, and we could see uh, multiple rounds of storms here on Friday. So a little bit of uncertainty regarding the overall severe weather threat, but the ingredients will be there. So going through time on your Robin's Toyota feature cast for today, plenty of sun out there. If you have any outdoor plans today, or tomorrow, we'll definitely have uh, pretty decent conditions for that. Starting out tomorrow with some sun, but eventually the clouds will start to increase ahead of Friday's storm system. And we move into the day on Friday. It looks like the morning commute will likely uh, be unaffected by rain. Most areas, it will be the afternoon that we're watching here. And that would be our severe weather window starting to open up right around midday Friday. And you can see uh, just the widespread nature of some of the thunderstorms here during the afternoon. So this, uh, unfortunately, may time out to the afternoon evening commute in a lot of areas, and you can see that final cold front sweeping through here on Friday, and then that severe weather window will close by the time we reach sunrise on Saturday. It is setting up to be a pretty nice and warm weekend as well, as it looks like most of the rain will be out of here by the time we reach Saturday morning. As far as the uh, rainfall totals, we've seen these come down as well. Notice on Futurecast, it just showed that one round of storms, but it is possible we can see multiple rounds of storms here. So right now, Futurecast showing widespread one to two inch totals, which wouldn't cause us many issues, but keep in mind if we do see an earlier round of storms during the day on Friday, it's possible still we can see some two to three inch amounts, which could lead to some localized roadway flooding. But at this point, I don't expect we'll see any widespread flash flood issues. Again, we have that 20% chance of rain in there on Saturday. That would be for any lingering rain in the morning. Afternoon turns warm and uh, mostly sunny as we'll eventually be in the upper 70s Saturday afternoon. 80 degrees still in the forecast on Sunday. Very warm to start out next week. We'll be in the mid-80s on Monday. And now we're watching next Tuesday, Wednesday, as it appears we'll have a similar setup for severe weather. So again, round one of potential severe storms late Friday into early Saturday. And then round two of potential severe weather sometime next Tuesday or Wednesday. That's a look at your forecast. Let's send it back over to Fernanda. Thank you, Josh. And to make sure that you are weather ready, here's an easy way to download the Your Weather Authority app. All you have to do is take out your phone and open your camera app. Go to your settings and make sure that you have the QR scanner enabled. Then just hold your camera up to your TV screen and a link should pop up for you there. Tap on that link to download our weather app right onto your iPhone or Android device. Your Waze Traffic Report brought to you by Gordon McKernan, Injury Attorneys.
We'll take in a final look here at the roadways this morning with our NBC6 Ways traffic alert. No traffic alerts popping up on our waste map as of right now as we get ready to wrap up the 6 o'clock hour on this Wednesday morning. So if you are about to head out the door, you can expect clear roadways for now. Now you can stay up to date on the latest traffic alerts with Ways and throughout our newscast right here on NBC6. Brad? All right, thanks, Fernando. Well, when the Shreveport mud bugs left town for... Excuse me, when the Shreveport mud bugs left town for New Mexico last week, they were riding high with eight consecutive wins. But as John Sartori reports, the trip is likely one they want to forget. The Shreveport mud bugs hadn't lost a game since March 13th, and that night they lost to the New Mexico Ice Wolves. This weekend, New Mexico took the bugs down again three times. Our mistakes cost us, and uh, so hopefully they know that it's everything's magnified. And here down the stretch and going into playoffs, that uh, things are going to be magnified. So little mistakes will become big mistakes. So if they can learn that this weekend and take some learning from losing, uh, that'd be great. We've been learning from winning, so now we got to learn from losing. The Bugs will have a chance to bounce back in familiar territory, but with a much different practice schedule, as a midweek concert at Hirsch Coliseum. Will force the team off the ice for most of the week. I think most of the guys would rather be out there practicing. Uh, it's definitely it's tough to just play, start playing on the day of the game, get back on the ice. But uh, I think we can still handle it. As the Amarillo Bulls come to Shreveport this weekend, the Bugs are ready to bounce back in front of the hometown crowd. I think we're all very excited to get get back in front of our fans. You know, the best fans in the North American Hockey League. So that'll be good. I think we need that. We feed off their energy and. We're excited for that for sure. Well, coming up, if you've been looking for a new furry friend, don't go anywhere. We'll meet a pet that's up for adoption looking for their forever home. It's after the break. Watching NBC6 News today. That's matter, which is why we have Kimberly Ward from the Cattle Parish Animal Shelter every other week to tell us about 
local adoptable pet this morning. She is joined by this crazy little kitty, Tater Tot. So, Kim, thank you for joining us. Tell us about this little climber. So, Tater Tot is about four months old. He's a little domestic short hair tabby, and he, he has lots of energy. He loves to climb. Yeah, I opened up the door into our little green room, and he just started to run right out. He was ready to go explore. Yep. You can see he's making his way, climbing all over me. Uh, for people who... <laughs> Who might Give be interested in adopting Tater Tot or one of the other animals that are there mm -hmm. at the animal shelter? What do they need to know? Uh, they can come to the shelter and meet the animal, <laughs> and if they want to adopt them, it's a $50 adoption fee, and they fill out the application. The animal will, will be spayed or neutered, microchipped and vaccinated, and then they'll be ready to go. Um, now, I know you guys have a lot of animals there at the shelter yes. right now. Can you tell yes. us about the, just the amount of animals that have come in really just since Monday? Right. We've had 23 cats come in between Monday and Tuesday and 52 dogs. So we have a lot of animals right now, and that includes the cats and kittens. Um, so, you know, I can tell you from, from my personal experience, mm -hmm. you know, I've adopted an animal there from the Cato <laughs> Parish Animal Shelter, and, and my little puppy has been great. So if you are thinking about adopting an animal, I would highly recommend it. Now, we're going to have all this information up on our website, so that way you can find out more about Tater Tot and all the other animals that are up for <laughs> adoption. Well, Kent, thank you very much for joining us and bringing thank Tater Tot around. And uh, stick around. Josh will have a final check of the forecast right after the break. <laughs> Watching NBC6 News today. Well, the final check of your weather. We've got sunshine out there this morning. That's not going anywhere today, but it's very cold. 30s and low 40s this morning and cool and sunny this afternoon with highs in the mid 60s. Watching the threat of some thunderstorms on Friday. A few of those can be on the strong side. You can read more on that at arkeltexhomepage.com. Brad and Fernanda. All right, thanks, Josh. Thank you for keeping it local with NBC6 News. And stick around. The Today Show is next.
new AquatexHomePage.com news app is redesigned with you in mind. Featuring local news blocks, your weather forecast, on-demand video, and more. Download today.